We know that estimates of the true proportion of people vaccinated in a population can vary dramatically between different sources, but such differences have a dramatic impact on estimating the safety and efficacy of vaccines. And to see why, imagine a population of 10,000 people of whom we know that 100 die of the virus. So 100 out of 10,000 die of the virus, which is a mortality rate of 100 per 10K. But we want to compare the mortality rate of the unvaccinated against the vaccinated. So first we have to know how many of those who die are unvaccinated. We'll suppose that it's 20, that means 80 vaccinated die. But to compare the mortality rate of the unvaccinated against the vaccinated, we need to know the proportion of the population of a whole who are unvaccinated. So let's assume 10% of the population is unvaccinated. So we've got 1,000 unvaccinated, 9,000 vaccinated. So 20 out of 1,000 unvaccinated die of the virus. That's a mortality rate of 200 per 10K. 80 out of 9,000 vaccinated die of the virus. Mortality rate of 89 per 10K. So the mortality rate of the unvaccinated is over twice that of the vaccinated, which of course would be very powerful support for the vaccine. But what if actually the true proportion was 30% unvaccinated? Then things are very different. Now we've got 3,000 unvaccinated, 7,000 vaccinated. So 20 out of 3,000 now unvaccinated die of the virus. That's a mortality rate of 67 per 10K. And in the vaccinated, it's a mortality rate of 114 per 10K. And in this case, the mortality rate of the vaccinated is nearly twice that of the unvaccinated. And that would be very powerful evidence that the vaccine is ineffective and unsafe. And that's why it's critical to get an accurate estimate of the true proportion of unvaccinated in the population. Because if that proportion is underestimated, then the efficacy and safety of the vaccine will be exaggerated.